February 5th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Exodus chapters 13 and 14 from the Old Testament. The Lord spoke to Moses, Set apart to me every firstborn male, the first offspring of every womb among the Israelites, whether human or animal, it is mine. Moses said to the people, Remember this day on which you came out from Egypt, from the place where you were enslaved, for the Lord brought you out of there with a mighty hand, and no bread made with yeast may be eaten. On this day in the month of Abib, you are going out. When the Lord brings you to the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Hivites, and Jebusites, which he swore to your fathers to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey, then you will keep the ceremony in this month. For seven days you must eat bread made without yeast, and on the seventh day there is to be a festival to the Lord. Bread made without yeast must be eaten for seven days. No bread made with yeast shall be seen among you, and you must have no yeast among you within any of your borders. You are to tell your son on that day, It is because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. It will be a sign for you on your hand and a memorial on your forehead, so that the law of the Lord may be in your mouth, for with a mighty hand the Lord brought you out of Egypt. So you must keep this ordinance as its appointed time from year to year. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore to you and to your fathers, and gives it to you, then you must give over to the Lord the first offspring of every womb. Every firstling of a beast that you have, the males will be the Lord's. Every firstling of a donkey you must redeem with a lamb, and if you do not redeem it, then you must break its neck. Every firstborn of your sons you must redeem. In the future, when your son asks you, what is this? You are to tell him, with a mighty hand, the Lord brought us out from Egypt, from the land of slavery. When Pharaoh stubbornly refused to release us, the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of people to the firstborn of animals. That is why I am sacrificing to the Lord the first male offspring of every womb, but all my firstborn sons I redeem. It will be for a sign on your hand and for frontlets on your forehead, for with a mighty hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt. When Pharaoh released the people, God did not lead them by the way to the land of the Philistines, although that was nearby. For God said, Lest the people change their minds and return to Egypt when they experience war. So God brought the people around by the way of the desert to the Red Sea, and the Israelites went up from the land of Egypt prepared for battle. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for Joseph had made the Israelites solemnly swear, God will surely attend to you, and you will carry my bones up from this place with you. They journeyed from Succoth and camped in Etham on the edge of the desert. Now the Lord was going before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them in the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so that they could travel day or night. He did not remove the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. The Lord spoke to Moses, Tell the Israelites that they must turn and camp before Piahiroth, between Migdol and the sea. You are to camp by the sea before Baal Zephon, opposite it. Pharaoh will think regarding the Israelites. They are wandering around confused in the land. The desert has closed in on them. I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will chase after them. I will gain honor because of Pharaoh and because of all his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So this is what they did. When it was reported to the king of Egypt that the people had fled, the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people, And the king and his servants said, What in the world have we done? For we have released the people of Israel from serving us. Then he prepared his chariots and took his army with him. He took 600 select chariots and all the rest of the chariots of Egypt and officers on all of them. But the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he chased after the Israelites. 
Now the Israelites were going out defiantly. The Egyptians chased after them, and all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army overtook them camping by the sea, beside Piah Hiroth, before Baal Zephon. When Pharaoh got closer, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them, and they were terrified. The Israelites cried out to the Lord, and they said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the desert? What in the world have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Isn't this what we told you in Egypt? Leave us alone so that we can serve the Egyptians, because it is better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses said to the people, Do not fear. Stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord that he will provide for you today. For the Egyptians that you see today, you will never ever see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you can be still. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. And as for you, lift up your staff and extend your hand toward the sea and divide it, so that the Israelites may go through the middle of the sea on dry ground. And as for me, I am going to harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will come after them, that I may be honored because of Pharaoh and his army and his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I have gained my honor because of Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. The angel of God, who was going before the camp of Israel, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them. It came between the Egyptian camp and the Israelite camp. It was a dark cloud, and it lit up the night so that one camp did not come near the other the whole night. Moses stretched out his hand towards the sea, and the Lord drove the sea apart by a strong east wind all that night, and he made the sea into dry land, and the water was divided. So the Israelites went through the middle of the sea on dry ground, the water forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians chased them and followed them into the middle of the sea, all the horses of Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. In the morning watch the Lord looked down on the Egyptian army through the pillar of fire, and cloud, and he threw the Egyptian army into a panic. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, Let's flee from Israel, for the Lord fights for them against Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, Extend your hand towards the sea, so that the waters may flow back on the Egyptians, on their chariots, and on their horsemen. So Moses extended his hand towards the sea, and the sea returned to its normal state when the sun began to rise. Now the Egyptians were fleeing before it, but the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the middle of the sea. The water returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the army of Pharaoh that was coming after the Israelites into the sea. Not so much as one of them survived. But the Israelites walked on dry ground in the middle of the sea, the water forming a wall for them on their right, and on their left. So the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the shore of the sea. When Israel saw the great power that the Lord had exercised over the Egyptians, they feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. God, I, I know the rest of the story. I know that they believed in you at that time, and I know they believed in your servant Moses, but boy, that sure doesn't last very long. And it made me think back to when they were, when they were fussing at Moses, why didn't you just let us die serving the Egyptians? Why did you drag us out here to be killed in the middle of the desert? And I think about a time in my life where I was so obstinate. I wanted what I wanted. I didn't want the life that God had for me. And God kept sending in all these amazing people into my life to help show me a different life that I could have, a better life that I could have uh, if I would only trust him. And I just kept wanting to further die in the life that I had. Of course, at the time, I, I didn't realize that what I wasn't choosing was going to be better. I truly thought that the life I had chosen for myself, the things I had chosen, 
they were what I wanted. And of course they were what I wanted because they were all about me. It wasn't that I was ever a mean person. I was actually a very nice person. But still everything was all about me. Uh, the things I did, the things I wanted, the processes I took, the relationships I had. It was all about what I wanted. And what I didn't know then and what I very clearly have begun to understand in the 10 years after that previous life is this, I was truly dying. I might have been happy working for the Egyptians, but I was truly dying. My life wasn't fulfilling. My life wasn't filled with joy. My life, my life was a mess. And amazingly, even to this day, I'm still dealing with some of the things I caused back in those situations. And the same thing for the Israelites, that, that they're stuck out in the middle of the desert and they, they see nothing because they don't have that faith and trust in God. And they truly believe that God has brought them out to the desert to die. And why didn't you just at least give us back our previous life? God, I just thank you so much for giving us hope. That I know on those days where... I want to return to my previous life. And I think if we're honest, we all have those moments where I think it'd be easier sometimes to just give up everything and return to that life and, and have it be all about me. Thank you for the hope that you send into our life, whether it's in the form of an email thanking us for something we've done and, and help somebody else on their path to you or a friend who stops by or calls saying, hey, I just want to let you know, I know you've been praying for me and this is what happened. I know that all those things are from you, God, but it gives me a little bit of hope and keeps me on my journey. Sometimes feeling like I'm in the desert wandering around in circles. It keeps me on that journey that you have me on. Those pieces of hope not for my glorification, but it gets me real excited when, when people ask me questions about you, when people allow me to pray with them, um, when people are reading your word. I get really excited about that. And for the first time in my life, it's not about me. I'm just really excited because it's about you. <laughs> God, I know it took me a long time, a lot longer than... It's going to take the Israelites wandering around in the desert. It took me a long time uh, to figure that out. Okay, maybe not that long, but it did take me a long time to figure that out. And for that, you know that I am truly sorry. But I am really excited for the journey I'm on with you right now. And I am very thankful for the hope that you give me. Um, sometimes very, very obvious, like a pillar <laughs> of fire in the middle of the night. I get those sometimes. Um, and other times just very softly and quietly and gently, uh, always filled with grace. So God, thank you. Thank you for that amazing hope uh, that you give each of our hearts every day. In your son's name we pray. Amen.